Greetings and salutations. It is I, Mr. Nothing, the museum curator of the weird and the strange, and the host who might be a ghost. Welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about the strange and unusual literature that I have found in my travels. Uh, today I wanted to start a new series that I call Short Story Tuesday. A, um, um, just a, a day where I can talk about uh, sh short form literature that I found um, from all around the world. Uh, um, in between, that I can do in between the book reviews that I do. Um, so today I wanted to talk about specifically Dr. Heidegger's Experiment, a uh, short story by Nathaniel Hawthorne that was written uh, around 19, in, around um, uh, 1840. Um, and I figured, uh, because I read it in high school for an English lit class, it, the message has always kind of stuck with me. And I, yeah, I would love to be able to, to talk about it again. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's, without further ado, let's talk about it. Dr. Heidegger's experiment uh, focuses on the titular Dr. Heidegger. Um, he is a scientist who, um, years ago, uh, he lost his fiance. Um, and he's been, he's, he's a little sad about that. Uh, um, and he is in the process of, you know, doing various experiments to, uh, uh, because he's a scientist, right? He invites four of his uh, friends over. They range from a um, uh, a colonel to a widow to a politician, um, a sort of exiled politician, and a merchant. So all of these people are similar in that they have had rough lives. Things haven't turned out how they wanted them to. Um, and they've made a lot of bad choices in life. So he invites all of these people over for a demonstration. He ends up showing them a decayed rose, um, and he ends he applies a strange liquid to it, and the liquid or the rose goes from a decaying form to a fresher form. Um, and he explains to the the four participants in this experiment um, that a colleague of his found the fountain of youth in Florida. So he uh, so he um, requested some samples and uh, to test to see how the fountain of youth worked. Um, he says it worked on the rose, so he's wondering if his friends want to try and uh, um, uh, try and become younger um, as an experiment here. Um, they're a little skeptical, but they they agree to it. And before he goes through it, the Dr. Heidegger says, "Okay, well, if we're going to do this, I I need you to." All acknowledge that if you if you become younger you won't make the same mistakes of your youth that you'll try to become better people and actually have a fresh start they all agree to that of course um, because who wouldn't uh, so dr. Heidegger gives them the uh, the mysterious liquid and they um, they, they immediately become younger uh, and they, they start clamoring for more uh, one of my favorite lines in the short story is that uh, dr. Heidegger says uh, you've all waited, or you've all spent years growing old. Surely you can wait more than 30 minutes to become young again. I just found that to be a bit funny. Uh, so they start clamoring for it, uh, and they're really happy about being younger. Um, the widow looks in the mirror and starts obsessing over her looks again. Um, the the colonel and the, the, the merchant and the politician uh, start talking about nationalism and patriotism and uh, become they, they become rowdy and they uh, they focus on money and so they're falling back into the same patterns and same routines that they they did when they were they they were younger. Uh, uh, they start thirsting over the woman in the in the room. It's it's clear that they're not actually um, they're not actually they're 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 going to make the same mistakes that they did. Um, the narrator even notes that in. The mirror in the mirror in the room, their reflection shows their their older form. So it's inter that is interesting because um, Nathaniel leaves it kind of um, a blurry line there about whether the rose is working at, in a delusional form or if it's actually working in a f physical sense. And he's just showing that they uh, the the group is still the same people on the inside. On the surface, they may be younger, but on the inside, they're the same people who made those bad choices all those years ago. 
Uh, at this point, they become rowdier, uh, and they end up knocking over the mysterious liquid, and it's gone. And Heidegger says that um, uh, that's all the liquid for now, and he wasn't—he didn't really want to participate in the um, the experiment at this point because he saw their behavior as a cautionary tale that wisdom comes with age, um, and that it's it doesn't seem possible for them to really have that repentance, that that second chance. Uh, because they're they seem to be falling into the same same pattern, same making the same mistakes as before. However, the other four of them seem to uh, really want to crave that the youth that they once had, and so they decide to head off to Florida and and find the 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 fountain of youth. Um, yeah, so that's the end of the story there. Uh, it's, it, was a, it was a pretty interesting short story. Um, Nathaniel Hawthorne does a great job, in my opinion. In terms of analysis, there's a couple points that I want to I wanna talk about. Uh, the first is that this story has, has fa fascinated me since the first time I, I read it. Um, it. It leaves you with a lot to think about. Specifically, uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne seems to be making a, a bit of a strong commentary on humanity here. Um, he seems to be suggesting that some people, particularly bad people, like e even if they're given fresh starts, they're not capable of, of change. Uh, that you're always going to make the same mistakes that you made before, even if some miracle elixir comes along. Which, as an optimist, that seems like a really negative message to, to put across. Uh, these people in the story, they're, they're given an opportunity to learn from their mistakes and become uh, become better for it and, and to, you know, carry their new youth uh, and go, I don't know, fix the world or something like that. And they end up, they end up doing everything that led them down th their, their path where they're not happy with life. And so it's it's not unreasonable to assume they're going to be even more unhappy with life once they, once they, they age out of this. Um so, and that it's it's really interesting that Nathaniel Hawthorne has said that. I I often think about stories where with time travel or the de aging process, where it seems like um, individuals have improved their lives in some way. Uh, and it seems like that's the majority of the message from those kind of stories. But Nathaniel Hawthorne's like, nah, son. Uh, some people they're not going to change. Humanity might not be capable of of repenting in that way and i think that's that's a strong message and it really sticks with you um because what if people aren't capable of change it's it's, it's kind of sad um especially if you're given an opportunity in, in this case another fascinating uh fascinating piece from this uh, story that I read is whether or not the miracle elixir even works, whether the fountain of youth produces the intended effect of physical de-aging. Uh, because as I, as I noted before, the, the mirror shows them the same uh, on the outside. The, the um, It shows them uh, as having as being the same people at this um, in their older age. And so you have to wonder is, is the intended effect of the, the, the fountain of youth is that uh is that a delusion delusionary effect where um the fountain doesn't change you physically but instead it makes you feel that as though you are younger uh or is it is it the literal sense here is it actually making these people younger um hawthorne doesn't give a definite answer there and i think that's um that's an, one of the better parts of the story is it it leaves you up to it personally i think it's a bit sad um, if it's a delusionary effect, because you're in control of your own mind a lot of the times. So if you aren't capable of producing a a situation where you can picture yourself changing your life for the better because you're young now, that's really sad for these four characters who who were given an opportunity to do that. It uh, they were all given an opportunity to atone for political corruption or losing money in the stock market. And they, they decided they would rather engage in those vices that, that led them to this point. Um, so I think that's, um, it's like, even with that in their own minds, they're, they're not capable of change. Uh, 
another aspect of that is the ending where uh they would rather s live with the seeming seemingly delusional aspect of the of the fountain of youth they they go to florida so it seems like they want to live in this delusion forever um if it's not physical then they're living in that delusion uh so i think that's particularly fascinating about this story um what was i gonna, gonna say i think i lost my train of thought there so, like, Heidegger, um, I think he needs a better class of friends if they're not willing to, uh, um, to, you know, move out of that delusion. And, uh, especially if it's a delusionary form for this particular, um, miracle elixir. Um, and lastly, I want to talk a little bit about Dr. Heidegger, um, because he doesn't seem to partake in the experiment himself. Uh, he has every opportunity to, uh, to take the elixir and find the love that he lost when he was younger. Um, because surely anybody would want to find love again, um, especially when he lost his fiance. But he doesn't participate in that, that experiment even before, even like when he initially sees the experiment work and he doesn't, um, he doesn't see them becoming rowdier. Uh, like he doesn't partake in that and that, that's interesting. Maybe it's because he's a scientist, uh, but I would say that uh, it's interesting that he chooses to uh, side with wisdom of age here rather than um, rather than engaging in the, the, the glory of youth again. Uh, he sees the others as a cautionary tale and just chooses not to not to uh, not to indulge in the fountain of youth. Um, and I think that it that's a highlight highlighting how there he's different from the others um how he's willing to accept uh some of the personal fa personal failings and how he hasn't lived to the best life that he wanted uh whereas the others they can't accept that they they can't accept their own personal failings it would be interesting to see more about uh, how how heidegger is exactly different from them but it doesn't go into it because it's a short story and uh you know if you want to you want to address those the specific details maybe you you need to make a novella or even a, uh, you know, a regular, regular book. So, um, that's the, that's the nature of the short story genre, I guess. Overall, I found this to be a, a great story, a great rereading it the second time. Um, and it still leaves you with that, that message of like, how capable is, uh, is humanity of change? Um, and I, I definitely recommend that you all go out and try to find this story if you can. I'll put a link to it in the description, and I hope you, you check it out. Um, in the meantime, I'll go off and try to see if I can find any Miracle Fountain of Youth elixirs and drink them. Although, I'm pretty sure that would turn me into a, a baby, given my age at this, at this point in time. So I probably won't do that. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, I hope you all have fun in your weird and unusual travels, and I will see you some other time. So have a good day.